1526, when the first enslaved Africans were brought to Carolina coasts as a part of Spanish colonization efforts, to 1619 in Jamestown, where the first enslaved Africans arrived on these English colonized and English speaking shores, the legacy and heritage of African descended peoples in America has been one of resilience, perseverance, and faith. This is not a story of victimhood, but a legacy, a legacy of creativity and endurance, a legacy of strength. Yet this is also a legacy long muted, omitted, and redacted from dominant narratives of American and even world history. In our effort to challenge and subvert such erasure, we here at Phillips Theological Seminary welcome you to our Black History and African American Heritage Month worship series. Greetings, I am Arthur Carter, Assistant Professor of New Testament and Director of Black Church Traditions and African American Faith Life here at Phillips. We hope this introductory video helps explain our vision and objectives as we commemorate Black History and African American Heritage Month with a four-part worship series on each Tuesday in February. Each service will be highlighted with a sermon by a leading Black scholar, a leading Black theological educator. Black History Month, also known as African American History Month, African American Heritage Month, and even more recently as Black Futures Month, is a time here in the month of February that has become recognized and dedicated to the intentional study and recognition of the history, heritage, life, and contributions of Black and African descended people in both the United States and across the globe. We here at Phillips Theological Seminary take our roles as theological educators seriously. We therefore do not recognize Black History Month in an effort to isolate, compartmentalize, or segregate Black recognition to a single 28 days. No, we recognize Black History Month as a focused and even culminating time in the year where we celebrate the creativity, the contributions, and genius found across the diaspora of African descended peoples. This is an opportunity for us to embrace the various ways that the academy is nourished by the church and nourished by society. It's a way for us to look at that those false walls of scholarship that too often serve as a barrier between public engagement and partnership. The very seeds of Black History Month are themselves rooted in community and, co and scholarship collaboration. In 1924, that brilliant scholar and historian Carter G. Woodson worked within his fraternity, Omega Psi Phi, to create Negro History and Literature Week. After a few successful years, Woodson in 1926 would collaborate with a body of scholars, the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, in order to establish a more expanded Negro History Week. Over the course of four decades, Negro History Week evolved into a national month-long celebration of Black life, art, culture, and history. Though some criticized Black History Month celebrations, the intention was and continues to combat the ever-present erasure and dismissal of Black history and Black accomplishments. It is an active effort to unsettle systemic complacency and dismissal. For us at Phillips, it is apropos that within a sphere of theological education, we take seriously Woodson's own aspiration that going back to that beautiful history is going to inspire us to even greater achievements. Woodson, author of one of the earliest and most influential scholarly studies of Black religious life in America, History of the Negro Church, and also author of the seemingly timeless Miseducation of the Negro, he understood the influential and formative role that African-American faith institutions, particularly Black church traditions, held for Black life, Black progress, and even national liberation. The story of Black people in America parallels the story of Black church traditions. It is a story of survival. In this Black History and African American Month, we decided not simply to look back, but to look at the now and the not yet by highlighting the brilliant, gifted, and anointed contributions of Black scholars to the church and to theological education. Too often, Black church traditions are caricatured as homogenous entertainment, slighted as charisma without depth. There's a long history of dominant culture minimizing both the intelligence and aptitude of Black people and dismissing the talent and brilliance of trailblazing Black scholars and teachers. We need think only of that U.S. President, 
Thomas Jefferson who wrote that blacks, quote, are inferior to whites in endowment both of body and mind. He also opined that in imagination, blacks are dull, tasteless, and never yet could he find a black that had uttered a thought above the level of plain narration. We might look back to that U.S. Vice President John C. Calhoun who thought to himself, if he could find a Negro who knew the Greek syntax, he would then, and only then, believe that the Negro was a human being and should be treated as such. Some think that the Civil War, Civil Rights Movement rectified these beliefs, but we only need to look at that Nobel laureate biologist, James Watson, who in 2007 demurred that he was inherently gloomy about the prospect of Africa because all of our social policies are based on the fact that African intelligence is the same as white, whereas testing, according to Watson, suggests otherwise. Still, some believe that the Obama presidency was proof that things have changed, yet we've just survived four years that attest to the enduring mutability of anti-Black racism and Western European white supremacist perspectives. Here in 2021, there remains large numbers of people, churches, schools, and even theological seminaries who openly maintain such views. And then there are many others that not so subtly insinuate these views with omissions in their syllabi, textbooks, curricula, and even the banning of critical perspectives championed by those scholars with various hues of sun-kissed skin. Here at Phillips, it is our contention that not only do black scholars exist, but some institutions are beginning to recognize their talents and skills. And whether by bravery or desperation, these some schools have begun to open doors for black scholars to lead theological programs and even theological institutions. And thus, it is in the steps of John Chavis and Edward Wilmot Blyden, Lucy Laney and William Sanders Scarborough, in the steps of James Cone and Katie Cannon, in the paths of Mordecai Wyatt Johnson and Ruth Simmons, Benjamin Mays and Leah Gaskin Fitzhugh. We are blessed to welcome four brilliant scholars and gifted preachers to share with us on each Tuesday of February. The Hebrew Bible scholar, the Reverend Dr. Valerie Bridgman, Dean at the Methodist Theological Seminary in Ohio. Practical theologian, the Reverend Dr. Stephanie Crumpton, Associate Professor at McCormick Seminary in Chicago. President, preacher, pastor, the Reverend Dr. Marvin McMichael, a past president of Colgate Rochester Crozier Divinity School. The professor scholar of religion and culture, Alton Pollard, president of Louisville Presbyterian Theological Seminary. We are humbled and blessed to welcome these four dynamic scholars to share a word with us on each Tuesday. It is within this backdrop, this black drop, that on behalf of our president, Nancy Pittman, on behalf of Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dean Lee Butler, and the entire committee on black church traditions and African-American faith life, that we welcome you to our 2021 Black History and African-American Heritage Month worship series. Welcome.